Over the past 25 years, there's been a boom in the ayahuasca industry. What used to be reserved for healers to drink and the use of divination and healing has become a global phenomenon with thousands traveling every year to experience what has been referred to as a life-altering experience. So Margaret, not sure if you're aware, but ayahuasca is, it's a mixture basically made from an am the bark of an Amazonian vine and then that's mixed with uh, the leaves from a native plant called uh, chacruna and they turn that into a tea. And so people are supposed to drink that and generally speaking, um, it's supposed to be used for healing or spiritual purposes. According to uh, different anthropologists, uh, this, this gentleman, Luis, uh, Luis Eduardo Luno, he's also an ayahuasca researcher. He says that generally speaking, it was just the healers or the curanderos that would, would drink this mixture. And then they could either, um, I'll, say, I'll say it from his mouth actually. He'll, he says, the manifestation of the psychosomatic illness, maybe you lose your voice or have a physical problem or in children through diarrhea and vomiting or somebody who has very bad luck in or business. They would go to a, a curandero who will take the ayahuasca, give the patient ritual baths and energy and protect them. So over the past 25 years though, this, this movement has gone quite global. So every year thousands of different people either descend in Peru or other, you know, Brazil, Brazil. other, yeah, other areas where this is taking place. There's a lot of people that are learning how to, to make the mixture themselves. Ayahuasca is being exported, et cetera, et cetera. So Iquitos is a region in Peru that is very popular for this. They have now a anywhere from 30 to 100 centers. And so it's becoming a little bit more of a tourist destination, which we'll get into the specifics about what are the, what's good or bad about that. But, but what do you think about this kind of, this rise in ayahuasca use? I think it's risky. Um, we, we saw a woman die from a pulmonary um, edema, mm -hmm. if I'm saying that correctly, um, an issue with her lungs. We've seen cases where women are sexually assaulted um, by shamans who are, are there administering the tea. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there are a lot of issues that could go wrong, and right. you're, you're traveling somewhere and taking a substance where it's not regulated, you don't really know what you're doing, and you're around people that you don't really know in some cases, and that can be really risky. Yeah, I mean, you definitely, you, you touch on the issues of the, the commercialization of this, for sure, um, when you're putting it into hands of people that maybe they're not legitimate cordonderos, and they're just, they're giving you some mixture, yeah, with something this potent or this intense, it makes sense you want to be with someone who really knows what they're talking about. Um, but just to give you an idea, a lot of people use this they, they use this to treat depression drug and alcohol abuse diabetes skin cancer there's with this treatment with the ceremonies as they call it there's no distinction between the mind and the body so a lot of the the physical manifestations of emotional or you know mental pain are it's supposed to be expunged Releasing it's supposed to be released that. through this so of course the the issue is that with anything if if you're if there's more demand, if there's more people coming in there, you have not only the, the fact that it is unregulated, as you said, it is, uh, it's very easy for people to, but like we have a couple of examples, for example, of there were two individuals that while they were on their trip, one person thought another was, was threatening him, so the, right. one was killed by the other. So I think those are the elements that it gets a little bit dicey Ayahuasca, regardless of what you think about that, I think the commercial aspect is is the biggest issue. You also have the fact that this is supposed to be a very spiritual journey. So with the, when there's that many people involved, it kind of it undoes the sanctity of the plant. It makes it harder to even cultivate the bark. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. What, what, what do you think? Would you would you ever go on something like this? <laughs> not I, to I get would too not. personal, I, but I would not. Um, but I know people who have personally, and they're. They rave about it. Mm -hmm. It's just supposedly very life changing. Um, I'm really not a risk taker in that way. Um, I'm a risk taker in other ways, but you know, going abroad, this this form of tourism, it's it's booming right yeah. now. It's weird that it's changing the landscape of. Absolutely, yeah, especially over the last 20 years. So in 2013, the International Center for Ethnobotanical Education Research and Service, they did, they did some clinical trials and they said that ayahuasca physiologically is very safe and has the potential to at least change life attitudes for the better. Um, but then I think the other question too is, you know, who are these people that are coming on these retreats? A lot of them are foreigners, many are Western foreigners. But if you look at some of these retreats that vary from anywhere from $900 to $3,000, you kind of have this, it's almost like this gentrification of of a spiritual journey so you have this this tourist economy that I, I think that would probably be the biggest issue that I would have with it because of course I read this and I'm like I want to do that but then you know you don't want to destroy indig indigenous populations uh, knowledge of, of something that's very therapeutic but yeah very interesting uh, I suppose if you're planning on going to any one of these ayahuasca retreats at least have a safe trip 